and Joe always, always does it. Always does it for the middle class, for the poor, for the minority community, for the underserved. He doesn't insult, he doesn't ostracize, he just, as I said, swings for the fences. And I think right now in Colorado, we are in such great need, not of just credentials or the ability to raise money, but we need someone who's going to represent all of us. And um, with a really clear, strong voice, and not just the oil and gas industry, and a handful of under other industries, which is what our current Attorney General is doing. And it is such a pleasure and honor for me to support Joe and go to bat for him the way he goes to bat for everyone else in this state. So thank you all for being here. And it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague and my good friend, Joe Salazar. And there have been a couple of times when Edie and I have, have disagreed on a bill. And, and you know, we just like, she's like, no, Joe, you can't get my vote. Come on, Edie. No, I'll buy you breakfast burrito. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I was on the United tour. I was, in the, uh, I was in the San Luis Valley where my family is from. And uh, I marched in the Monta Vista parade there. Uh, you know, people saw me and, and, and uh, I think there were family members because you know, pretty much everyone in the valley is related. Marching through the parade, feeling really good about that. For five um, years, I have been a state representative. I've been an elected official. And I've put myself on the line for communities, right? Um, you know, bringing bills such as the, uh, you know, the repeal of Columbus Day. Uh, replacing with Indigenous Peoples Day, or bringing, bringing bills to help out the homeless community, bringing bills to help out poor folks and, and, and our disenfranchised communities, bringing bills for the, for the Latino community, and for the African American community, right? For, for, for women's reproductive rights, and just so many things that sometimes Democrats see as toxic, and I've been willing to bring those bills and build a reputation around that, right? And people know me throughout the state because they're like, man, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a lightning rod, Salazar. I mean, you're, you're not afraid of doing these things. And, and it occurred to me that what was bothering me the most is that as an elected official, you have the privilege and the power of doing some amazing things for people. But you also put yourself on the line. <clears throat> and you hold yourself accountable to the people through your votes. And I haven't been afraid to do that. And so, as I go across the state and I see my opponents talking, it dawned on me, they're just talking. Mm -hmm. They've never had to put themselves on the line. They've never had the NRA having their crew come down upon you, of having people threaten you and your family at your house. They never had RMGO make threats against you. They never had the oil and gas companies fund your opponent at such a high level that it seemed doubtful that you could win. They've never had to put themselves on the line that way. And yet they still talk. And I thought to myself, you know what? Yeah, there's a privilege and power of being an elected official. And when I have said these past five years that I was gonna protect the disenfranchised, that I was going to protect uh, our communities of color, that I would fight like hell to protect my daughters and their right to make whatever life they want to make for themselves, to protect the LGBTQ community. When I said that I was gonna do those things, I have done it each and every single time. And so when I stand before you today and I say that on day one when I become attorney general, literally day one, that Martinez appeal is going to be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And I can say that. And I have been asking my opponents to take stances on that, and they refuse to, which got to the other part of why I'm irritated. Because when I sit there and think about the fact that they've never put themselves on the line for anything, and yet they're running their mouths about everything, then I start thinking to myself, well, this must just be talk, because 
They're accepting money from oil and gas. They're accepting money from all the big attorneys out there who represent all the big <coughs> interests that really control the legislature. And I don't. I represent the people. And I accept money from the people, not from them. And so as my angst started to change a little bit, that I shouldn't be upset about this, this is actually, this is actually what I'm supposed to do. 